I think that when we decided as an institution to be involved in the firing up scheme, it wasn't necessarily um, with the primary objective of, of trying to recruit more students onto our course. It was more of an obligation to a discipline that was being lost and a responsibility myself and my colleagues as ceramicists um, to try and um, pass on and impart some of the, the um, fascination and the power and the, and the grace of the material really. The potential for the firing up scheme um, to reverse the decline in interest in ceramics in higher education is enormous. Um, you speak to the children and they say things like, we've never really played with clay before. And I've gone in with a very open-minded attitude, a fun attitude. I want it to be enjoyable for the children. And it isn't about the results, it isn't about the GCSEs, which is what the staff and the student, the teachers, they want it to be about results. I went in there with the idea of, I want you to love this material. We, we'd never touched clay before, never. at all. And Serge came in and said, here's some clay, just do what you can. We had, um, yeah. it was 14 minutes, we had to make four pots. And yeah. he, he timed us and he was like, come on, you've only got three minutes left. And we were like, <laughs> ah. So, yeah, that was good, wasn't it? it, it the pots ended up really good, though. Yeah, they were yeah. the best ones we ever did. Yeah. <laughs> Nationally, there's been lots of schools that have closed or stopped doing ceramics, so now we see a, an increase of that. It should gain momentum because of the clusters around the UK, so I'm hoping that it will be that we are, we'll see this continuing. And I, although it is only a short intervention, I think we can build upon that. Uh, we are certainly going to keep in touch with all of the teachers and try and encourage them. I think, um, yeah, through the Firing Up programme, I've really seen the teachers gain a lot of confidence. Um, uh, and they've said that, you know, they, they've really appreciated having someone that they can, you know, talk to who they know, um, you know, knows what they're talking about and knows about clay. So I think that's been really important. Um, and, yeah, making them see that it's, it doesn't have to be that complicated. That's been particularly the angle I've been trying to approach the schools with. For me, I see the legacy in terms of departmentally, we're much stronger within working with clay. And because staff have got the confidence, we are then putting that into working with the students and developing in terms of further projects. We're already discussing what we'll do next year in terms of you know sculptural projects, 3D projects, developing on the, the building construction skills that we've learned. Building upon the firing experience, um, for me, I've obviously got the skills now to teach more than I had before. I think I've developed them um, and I know how to teach them, which is the important part. And I feel the skills now are in the department and I can develop skills, uh, projects, schemes of work based upon these skills and now know what pupils are capable of doing. Basically, I think at any age now from knowing what I can do with clay in the classroom, so I feel that will impact on my teaching. My sessions were really intuitive, quick, kind of throwing clay at a wall, throwing slip at it, throwing glaze at it, and maybe I'd pull back a little bit so I'd have a bit more thought about it. Maybe. I, one of the good things about this is you can, there's three of us doing it, so you can all, we can all learn from each other to some extent in terms of approach and how we do things differently. It's always interesting to work with a younger age group, having been immersed with an older age group for quite a while now, to actually see how youngsters engage with the material it makes you almost think yourself when you work how do I engage with the material I think for the youngsters to be able to create something from scratch from their own ideas I think it's just been a wonderful experience for them and the end product has been fantastic here's an opportunity for some of those students who are on graduate or postgraduate courses to look at the work of GCSE students and to think well I feel very inspired by the work that a 16 year old has been doing um, and in my course and the way that I do things, so fantastic. I'm enjoying my small project, just learning, because like, I've never really worked with clay before, so just yeah, working with it and seeing what you can do with it and all the different types that you can do. I've seen the work that Miss has done at school and I've always been impressed with the work at BTH, but it's the first time I've seen anything like this in a gallery and uh, really impressed by the standard of all the work. Um, and I think it's just broadened their experiences and she seems to have grown in confidence doing the project. The firing up just 
fitted perfectly. It brought together all the expertise we've developed in our students as mentors in the classroom and our graduates as practitioners that can deliver art, art in the classroom. Um, and particularly it also came at a time where craft is a kind of uh, a subject that is under threat uh, due to changes in the national curriculum and we feel it's really important that it provides people with opportunities that, that, that other forms of art don't necessarily touch. So we were very keen that we worked with the Crafts Council. Having the Crafts Council involved with the school has been great because they probably have never heard of the Crafts Council before but now it's become a major buzzword. Um, and you know, they, they really kind of, they, they probably didn't have so much of a, an understanding of the word craft before, it was just another material used in, in, in an art subject, basically. So I think there's been a bit more of a kind of recognition. Um, and it's given us the impetus to, to, to look for other funding sources as well and, and to actually kind of look to build beyond the budgeting kind of constraints of an art department in a, in a, you know, in a local authority school. So, um, yeah, we will build on this because the, there is just so much here that we, is not offered by any of the other projects in the curriculum. But I think there's a massive spin-off for us um, as a school, aside from the, the actual project, and that is um, the level of thinking, the innovation, the creativity, all of that that's being developed through um, projects such as this benefits us in, uh, in the wider school environment and around the classrooms. Students come back much better, much better thinkers, uh, much more creative, much more imaginative, and their skills that are applicable right across our curriculum. Yes, she came home and said, I threw things at the wall. It seemed I was filthy, dirty, but I enjoyed getting it done. She said it was a great, had a good time. It's been a really good uh, cross-curricular strength in it because it's been really strange for the children to see a science teacher in the art department looking like they've got lost but actually being a part of a project down here. And it's been really good working with children up in science and then coming down here into the art department and seeing scientific practice applied to um, a fire in the ceramic ware that they've made. Um, I think the children have achieved a number of things out of the project. Um, their confidence has grown massively with their art skills and their willingness to try new activities and also to meet new people as well. Um, and their resilience in terms of being um, able to continue through making mistakes and to actually learn from those. Um, with our young people they often have a very low resilience and if something goes wrong then they will often demonstrate very destructive behaviours. Um, and we've seen a reduction in, in the amount of destructive behaviours that have been displayed. I think the pupils have benefited from working with Claire because they've learned to take more of an ownership, a personal ownership of the work. Um, I was very surprised to see um, the way they wrapped their work up and made sure it was stored safely and was very conscious of it drying out between sessions and it was more than I expected from them, um, which is obviously surprising myself. Um, and also, definitely the, the way they took pride was the, the biggest thing for me. Doing the Firing Up project, we have in the past our A-level has been painting and drawn and our upcoming A-level students, we've got quite a few, are interested in doing ceramics. Um, so we're going to develop that with our A-level this year. Um, Melissa is going to do A-level art, but she's staying on at college and obviously then hopefully she will go on to university and um, she is interested in pursuing this. Yeah. Say that it, you can actually make a living from ceramics and things to do with art. I never really thought that you could before, but now after doing this I thought I could like have an opportunity to do, so, do something in the art industry with ceramics. And I'm just aware at the moment that there's enormous pressure on higher education to be just economic mm. and to think about the impact on the economy. And this puts at risk the arts and the humanities in a way that I don't think the government understands. And I think it's so short-sighted and it's vitally important to invest in the arts and the humanities and the creative industries because without that, society is a far poorer place. But actually, in terms of creating the future for young minds, I think giving them a broad experience of the arts at an earliest possible age is a door to so many different careers and understandings. And actually, it's also a false assumption that graduates from the humanities and the arts don't contribute towards the economy. They do so in so many yeah. rich and diverse ways. I would be happy and proud if my daughter said she wanted to have a, a career in ceramics. I think it would be great. It does make you feel proud because, like, you don't really get an opportunity like this every day and it just amazes you what you can actually do and accomplish. 
I feel really proud what I've achieved. Um, I never thought that it would turn out that good because I've never done anything with clay before, but yeah, I'm proud of it. <laughs>